it's it's really um it, it's really interesting how uh, like that that overlap that you see that you see more and more like i don't remember whether i mentioned this last time but i i was uh oh yeah i think i did mention it last time i was uh i was like more seriously reading some of Marx's work to see what, like, to investigate the boogeyman, so to speak. And right. I noticed, I noticed a few things like, whoa, he says he's like for the gold standard. That's like what libertarians say. And it yeah. also, the, the, what he says here and here makes it sound like he would be really favorable to Bitcoin too. A lot of libertarians <laughs> like Bitcoin too, but a lot of them yeah. are super anti-Marx and think he would be yeah. totally against those things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Marx ultimately, I mean, he has been demonized a lot and I think particularly demonized um, uh, in, in the Anglosphere, um, well, very much so in, in the United States, but, but elsewhere as well. Um, you know, his, his thing was, wasn't it, that he wants the, the best, the most good for the most amount of people. And uh, therefore, he was analysing the capitalist system, which he thought didn't do that. Um, now, you may disagree with his answers, or you may agree with his answers and think that when they were put into practice, they didn't work, or you may say they were never put into practice. But ultimately, that's what he's trying to do. You know, Marx isn't coming along saying, I want to destroy the human race, which is the reputation he tends to have. He wants to, you know, help people and make the maximum number of people happy. Um, and so, you know, all of, all of those things, like, you know, if Bitcoin works and perhaps saved us all the labor of, you know, making money, then, you know, go for it. And then we can have a bit more relaxing time, um, which was a, a, a Marxist ideal, which hasn't quite been made to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's one thing that that's interesting too. Like um, in terms of Hegel, who we were talking about, um, that's a that's another thing I find interesting about Slavoj Žižek because one of, one of the things like he's a super hard to understand philosopher too. But like with a like as with a lot of these really abstract thinkers, the more you the the more lectures of theirs that you watch and the more that you read you read of their work the more you understand their worldview a little bit and uh i, I think uh slavoj zizek has talked before about how he's he's a marxist and a hegelian but he's more of a hegelian than a marxist and it, which is interesting because even though hegel preceded marx he wanted he wanted to put this kind of like hegelian spin on Marx and recover more of the Hegel that Marx discarded, but still with like sort of a Marxist ideal, which I think is interesting. Like I'm not a Marxist, but I understand like basically any any political ideology usually has the has the idea of wanting to help people. That's one that's one thing that's really important to understand.